Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. Hi. All right. Yes, I unmuted you just in time, then. Just in time. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we've got uh, we've got Lou with us today. We've also got a very special guest who is a regular viewer of the show and a fellow game dev of mine, of mine, of fellow yours. game dev of, of the game dev <laughs> community, oh, no. game devs. Um, Sam Mithalor Richards. You'll all be very familiar with him if you were uh, a regular viewers. So Sam, I know I've just introduced you, but um, tell everybody who you are, what you do, pimp anything you want to pimp, games you're working on, I don't know, anything else you want to you want to talk about. Okay, um, well I'm, um, I don't know, I'm a sort of hobbyist game dev, in a way. Um, I haven't made any money yet, that's the sort of <laughs> ultimate goal. But, uh, well, I've been uh, going at uni, uh, doing game tech, I'm a student full-time really. Um, so I haven't had much time recently, but I am working on a, um, a game for the seven-day roguelike jam. All right, yeah, cool. Sort of in between assignments pretty much you've done a but, few jams yeah. haven't you have i know you've been yeah yeah i've, I've done a few things it's something um, that i'm not actually involved in that much because i've you know i'm doing my game full time i don't really have mm, that yeah, much yeah. time to give to other things i should really because it'd we make should, me better we, we should yeah I, I, i've done one and i really enjoyed it yeah mm. so you got you you did really well at it, so you, it looked awesome that you did specky jam didn't you yeah yeah i did and uh yeah, I liked. It. Yeah, I didn't like the controls personally, but the uh, I liked the concept. Was it Moon Boy or Moon Man? Or uh, it something? was Moon Unit Z. Moon Unit Z. There you yeah. go. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you, for, thank you for coming on the show, um, Sam. And yeah, uh, that's uh, right. just so everyone is aware, Steve couldn't make it today. He's uh, unfortunately had work commitments, and our, the the other Sam, the regular, should I say regular? He's not been on for weeks now. <laughs> um, he's just recently moved down south, and he's unfortunately doesn't have access to. Well, he does have access to the internet, but it is it's it's the worst internet ever. So it's even worse than it was when he was <laughs> worse up north. Than it. Yeah. Um, Sam, um, the roguelike that you're developing is it actually a roguelike? Um, <laughs> it's a platformer, so roguelike. <laughs> is a roguelike I guess. <laughs> so what, yeah. what exactly is a roguelike then, Slew? Come on, have you, have you actually made your mind up exactly what a roguelike is? Well, let's ask Sam since Sam's doing um, one for a roguelike. What would you find a roguelike as being? Um, I guess a roguelike would be a top-down dungeon crawler, yeah. Um, see? I didn't say it wasn't! <laughs> I didn't say it wasn't! Yeah. I, know, I, I like the term roguelike-like, but really, really, roguelike is a bubble term, so... Right. Yeah. So I mean, is, yours, is your game that you develop in kind of a hardcore mode sort of thing, is it randomly yeah. generated, or procedurally generated, uh, well, all the kind of tropes? it will be, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. all right, okay. And if you, how have you approached your game? I know that this is uh, this is a show about game, you know, playing games specifically. Yeah, yeah, but sure. we always always want to ask a few game dev related questions anyway to our game dev guests. Um, so, how have you approached the design of your game? Then, have you sat down and designed it initially, or have you started prototyping and then worked off that? Or, um, well, I, I'm sort of building off of previous projects I've done. So I've spent like. A, couple of years now making another game called Teleporter um, where you sort of move blocks around um, with your mind essentially but just a mouse okay but uh, <laughs> and uh, this is sort of is I got a bit bored of that really that sort of concept so this game is sort of coming out of that um, and it's sort of building off of it a bit more um, it's sort of uh, sort of like Magneto where you can control metal okay. um, so it's sort of a bit more sort of focused, really. Um, something. So yeah, in terms of the design, then you didn't actually sit down. I mean, when I designed Subnet, yeah. I, I sat down and I wrote a lot of background uh, stuff about the story. Mm. I well, previous to that, actually, Lou and I had done a lot, quite a lot of prototyping in Unity. We'd put a lot of right, mechanics sure. together. We actually, the first thing was I approached Lou and I said, "What engine should I use?" Because you've got a bit more experience than me. Mm. Um, and then I said, "Right, this is what I want to do. I want to put parkour into a game, and then I want to, I want to have a this kind of, you know, these are the mechanics." And then it kind of went crazy and then we kind of yeah. compressed it into a much smaller thing and then it's totally changed from what it originally was you know mm, sure but I, what i tend to do is i sort of like i have ideas um then i sort of let them sort of stew for a bit really okay um and once they sort of coalesce into an actual game i sort of write down the sort of key points 
um, and keep note of them so I don't have to remember everything. Really? All right, fair enough. So, so do you do quite a lot of planning then? Is it? Is it sort of a because I when I the, my approach to things is that I just like to start building and see what mm, happens. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe retrospectively start to to do some planning around that, sort of get little bits and put them together. Uh, I find it really hard to to write documents and to write designs yeah. and, and draw things and stuff. I, I like to get stuck in there and and try mm. to prototype very rapidly. Mm. I uh, I certainly I certainly used to be like that, um, but I'm I still now sort of I write down like the sort of basic points that I come up with like mechanics and stuff, um, and like how things behave, and then I will generally get jump straight into Unity. Um, but I've actually I've had to for a module at my on my course I'm at uni doing games tech. Um, We've recently had to actually write a game design document for a game we're not actually going to make, mm -hmm. which is really quite interesting because you have to sort of go really in depth about it, about it and like draw concept art and stuff when you're not actually making the game. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I as soon as I kind of had a formed opinion or you know, found opinion about exactly what I wanted to do or at least an idea, I put an executive overview together, which was basically a very brief synopsis of of the story of the game, which is is for the it's for the executives, it's for the people who aren't technical, you know, uh, it's to sell it, to pitch it, you know, if I ever wanted to do that, which I don't because I'm indie, but you know what I mean, it's yeah. it's that kind of thing, um, and it actually helps me uh, immensely when I'm. I'm picking up out ideas for the for the game when I'm picking out, for example, what to do for the demo level. I've picked a paragraph of what I've written in the executive overview, and I went right. That's what we'll focus on for this particular bit. It'll also help me when I'm writing scripts. I can then go right. I'll extrapolate this paragraph out into 200 pages of script or whatever. You know, I'm not. It's not going to be that long, but you know what I mean. It's um, and then under, underneath that, I've went into detail about the mechanics, um, highlighted the you know the, the the basic general idea about how how the game's going to work or the key concepts at least uh, and then I went into a bit more detail about things like the characters and then I wrote a I think a 10, a 10 or 15 page document about the background and history of the world so that kind of sets the scene for the concept artists and mm -hmm. you know people who are going to be doing the art adding the artistic flair into the game and it really does help people but you know it all depends on the people that you've got on board as well if you've got people on board in fact <laughs> well yeah I mean I'm it's definitely it's sort of a must if you have people that you need to try and convey your ideas to. Um, if you're just working on your own, though, I don't think it's necessary. One thing I have found, I mean, I, I even though we do, I do have other people. Mm. One thing I have found is that even though I've written this documentation, it's quite often that I will stray from the points that I originally wanted to work because I've been working mm. on it so long now. So yeah. looking back at it every couple of months and reading over what I've written. Kind of, it not just refreshes my mind; it it focuses me. You know, it keeps me in a uh, in this in going in the right direction. It's very easy in game dev to go, "Oh, what about this? Oh, I will try this. Oh, that'd be a good idea. Oh, that's a cool mechanic. Let's try that." No, no, stick to stick to what you know because otherwise you'll never get it finished. You know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm never going to get it finished anyway in this run. It's just, <laughs> but you know. Uh, but everyone approaches things differently. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, before we go into any more game dev stuff, um, I'll just give a quick uh, a quick reminder to everybody. We do swear on this show, so please, if you are offended, turn off now. However, please don't because we need viewers and we we, <laughs> we want you to watch us. Um, we, uh, if you've got any ideas for a list of things in a ga in games that you want uh, us to us to go over later on, please let us know now or, or give us some ideas. For example, we have lists. Uh, we, we've we've had a list previously saying. Uh, we're talking about the uh, most annoying sidekicks, or the you know the, the the most loved protagonist, the best weapons in games, that kind of thing. If we've done it already, obviously we won't recover it, but we do have a little section later on in the get in the show where we go over that. Um, and first of all, what we normally talk about in uh, this part of the show is games that we've played. However. <laughs> Both Lou and I have not played any games at all this week. I've been absolutely just, just. I've been hammering away at Unity Five this week and trying to upgrade my uh, my game project into it. And unfortunately, there's quite a lot of issues that take up a lot of time uh, in in Unity Five. There's a few bugs and that. So I've I've just been consumed with that. I haven't I haven't even seen my wife for for a week. So you know, <laughs> that's me. And Lou's just got the same excuses as he normally has. Yeah. 
He's got a sad little life and he never plays any games when he should be playing games all the time. No, I'm too busy doing work for you, Chris. That's it, yes. He has actually... Oh, on the, on that note, we have actually got a website as well now. We, up, we do! We, we uploaded our website. Lou spent a, a couple of hours on Sunday or Saturday putting it together. So www.resonancearcade.com. Go and check it out. It's just one page. Just basically... You know, it's all of the social media platforms it's in small, one place. It's small but perfectly formed, Chris. I like it. Yeah, so I do I. I think it looks nice. Yeah. And it's exactly what I wanted when I asked you for it, so thank you very much for that. You're um <laughs> So, yeah, um, I suppose we, sh- we should ask you, Sam, then. What have you played this week or recently that, that you're um, interested in? Well, uh, well I've been playing... Uh, recently, I've been playing uh, Boulder Skate 2 quite a bit. Um, I've... The um, Pillars of Eternity, which is a sort of a new take on the sort of standard genre, is coming out um, the end of uh, this month, actually. Okay. So as a sort of build up to that, I've been playing through uh, Baldur's Gate One, and now I've got to the two and sort of uh, building it's been up through. Many many years since I touched a Baldur's Gate game. Mm. Many I do many years. That. I do like the look of this game. I've never played Baldur's Gate or any. I've never played any of the series. But look at screenshots of it. It looks really good. The only thing that puts me off is the fact that you've got to control a whole party rather than one character. I think that's probably why yes. I haven't played it. That bit um, puts yeah. me off. I know it does get. I mean, you can pretty much. There is AI routines uh, that you can sort of. Program. It's like uh, Dragon Age, really, um, in that you can. Either. You can sort of. It was pretty much the first game they made, and when they went on to make um, Dragon Age and such. But it's um, so you can set up AI for your characters and just watch them do battle. But it's not very good, and they'll usually end up dying. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I tend to find what's the easiest is just select everyone and then click on one target at a time, and See? they'll just generally. Gang rape them. We had, yeah, we had arguments about this um, a few weeks ago because we were talking about Dragon Age and, and the, mm. uh, the mechanics. I love the fact that you can program in all the AI and you can tell the AI exactly what to do under every condition. I love that about the Dragon Age uh, franchise. I haven't played Inquisition yet. It is on my list. But I played um, uh, the first one, Origins to Death, and I've loved all of the previous Bioware games, although they, they didn't have the same mechanic in them. Um, no, the ones I played didn't at least anyway. Yeah, but I love the fact that you can say, right, when you're at fifty percent health, drink a potion, or make sure that you stand back and stay away from, you know, the enemies. And I like the fact that you can control every single character exactly how you want under almost any of the situations that come up. But people like Lou, and people like um, who was it? it? Was was it Steve or was it? It might have been our guest last week actually who who said I think this. It was yeah, because Steve Steve quite likes Bioware stuff. He, I think he prefers. Um space one star wars Ma- uh, no uh, mass, effect. mass effect oh right right that doesn't that doesn't have the ai um control yeah. in it yeah. but you can control you can tell the ai where to go like in real time whereas you can you, know, you can still do that in dragon age but you 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 basically can just leave them to their own devices if you've set them up in the right uh kind of format uh so yeah i uh, i love it but so many people just do that select everything send them you know all attack at once and that's why that's why the game's hard for people because they don't they don't get into that detail i think well i mean the shame in the thing about Baldur's gate obviously because it's well it's really quite old now i mean it's the first game they actually made and like you, there is quite a lot of scripting you can do hmm. but it's just not not worth it i can't really. remember anything about Baldur's gate i have to be honest um is it is it is it a two D kind of game? It's isometric, uh, yeah, rendered, um, and it's sort of well, it's based on D and D, sort right. of the um, so sort of the world and the lore of it. Oh, fair enough. Uh, it's it's yeah, so second edition. But, yeah. So you play Baldur's Gate two, the enhanced edition. What do you know? What the difference is between that and the original Baldur's Gate two? Um, well, the han- enhanced edition works on PCs nowadays. Uh, that's pretty much the main thing. Right. Was, um, <laughs> Not enhanced, yeah. working edition. <laughs> well, yes. It's, um, yeah, I think you can get the uh, original of GOG, maybe, um, it, like emulated, but mm. that's the sort of the goatee one is the enhanced one now, and they fix a lot of bugs with it, um, sort of on top of that. Cool. Um, so, it's, again, it's one of those that I want to go back to at some point, but I probably never will. I've, I picked up... Um, 
uh, an old favourite of mine, Shadowgate. I picked up a remastered version of that recently. Uh, right. I talked about it about five, six shows ago, and it's all it is is like it's an adventure game. It's a two D adventure game, although they've made it three D and made it all shiny and nice looking. Um, and it's you, you essentially select an object on the screen or select an action, then point at an object. But you can quite you can't. It's not one of those games where you can click like the old adventure games where you can click on everything until you get the right combination. If you do something wrong, you're gonna die. You know, you might. You might click on a statue and the statue will open up a big gaping hole in the floor and you fall down and get eaten by a dragon or something. You know? <laughs> so it's it's right. quite difficult. And I haven't got very far in the remake because it's so so difficult to do that. Mm, I really, sure. really want to play Baldur's Gate. I, I'm looking at it, it looks like the game that I would want to play, but mm. I've never enjoyed any Bioware game. And I think I need to start... I need like a gateway drug to get into the Bioware way of thinking. What have you, what have you tried, Lou? What game, I Bioware tried Mass games? Effect and I just couldn't get away with it. It was too... Weird. And it's not. It, it doesn't feel friendly when you start playing Mass Effect. I don't think. It, 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 but it, it's, you don't know what the hell is going on. Have you played the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic games? I, I, well, I think I played a little bit of it years and years ago, but again, I didn't get into it. And that was touted as being as good as Final Fantasy VII. Are people comparing it to that? Absolutely amazing. It had the same kind of like <gasps> like gasps and like amazing plot twists. And, mm. and I loved the turn-based kind of mechanics. You know, as soon as you see an enemy or you engage an enemy, it pauses if you've turned that on uh, and you can kind of choose what to do. But then it's like, you know, Final Fantasy VII where you could have the active time battle on or off. Um, yeah, I I love all that kind of stuff. I just want to quickly say hello to people in chat. There's uh, quite a few people having a having a good old chat in there. Um, yeah, hello, pseudo's in there. Uh, yeah, hello, to pseudo <laughs> Josie, uh, one of our one of our Hi, friends. Josie. Yes, yeah. I don't like Bioware. Um, well, that's, I'm not going to say I don't like them, but I've not really gotten into any that I played, and I've only played a few of them: Knights of the Old Republic and a bit of Mass Effect. In it, mm, couldn't really get into either of them. But looking at uh, looking at Baldur's Gate. It so looks like a game that I would love to play. Mm -hmm. I think just the old school isometric look of it is is enough to kind of get pique my interest. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I probably will give it a go. Yeah, just a quick, well, just a quick hello to everyone else because we only just mentioned Josie. I just want to say hello to Ka 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 I can't even say everyone's name. Kaz Kazi X and Peak Peck Pro. I, I should really practice these before, or at least in my head, before I try and say them. Bri Brian Lutt and. Um, I was just going to say Mythalo, but you're right there. <laughs> and uh, Zombie, hello Zombie, for, thanks for turning up again. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, sorry, let's let's continue. Uh, so yeah, you've played that this this year, this week, month. <laughs> this uh, year? <laughs> yeah, month. Yeah, no, this no, month. Week, but yeah. But no, I mean, I, I would, if I was you, Lou, I, I, if I was you, I'd be into them. <laughs> I, I love Bioware games. They're easily one of my favourite publishers, one of my favourite game devs. Easily up there with, you know, I wouldn't. So put I them, keep hearing. So I, I keep hearing. I wouldn't put them up there like with my favourite games. I don't think, but they're up there with like some of the greats. You know, they're in my top twenty most of their games. I would say, and that's that's still a bold statement. I think when it comes to the amount of games that are out there. So you've also played another game this week, Sam. Um. Yes. Uh... Yes, uh, Town of Salem. It's a sort of uh, it came out. Well, it was kickstarted. I kickstarted it. Uh, I think it was last year, um, and it's came, it came out on Steam uh, a while back. But it's a <clears throat> sort of. It's very interesting. It's pretty much a, a video game version of Werewolf, which is a card game where you. You have like it's a party game essentially. So you have like a group of friends, maybe like uh, I think up to sixty-four people, um, where you're each assigned a role, and you're part of a town. But some of you are werewolves who have to eat the town members at night, and then during the day, the town members have to lynch werewolves. Right. Um, <laughs> but then. Town of Salem sort of adds its own twist on it with uh, mafia who have to kill people, and uh, there's like loads of other sort of roles that do do sort of um, each have a different objectives. Uh, it's got to, a cute cute art style to it, from what I can see. It's uh, yeah, looking yeah. on the Steam. Uh, yeah, Steam it's sort of video. flash like almost. I guess yeah, it sounds interesting. It's uh, yeah. is it multiplayer or is it just single player? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's multiplayer. It's uh, fifteen people per game. And it's basically you have to essentially you have to lie about your role in chat 
to a load of people and sort of role play that role. And it's uh, yeah, there's there's some very sort of interesting things that come out of it. Um, I like the matter of that. I like games that, mm. co- that make you do something more than just play the game. Like, um, mm. is it the uh, the ship? I think it is, or something like that. The one yes. where yeah. you're basically a murderer on a ship, and you've got to pretend not to be the murderer. I think. Well, everyone else has to try and find out. It's a bit like Cluedo, but in real time. Um, and a few of my friends were really into that game because it's all about bluffing. Have you heard yeah. of it, Chris? You look really. Uh, no, confused. no, I haven't. It sounds it, it sounds like poker ship. to me. <laughs> it sounds like kind of uh, you know a lot a lot when you play poker in real life or even online. It's uh, very much you know poker face, isn't it? You have to mm. stop yourself from giving yourself away. Mm. What's well, it's a big thing in uh, board games, really. I mean, there's an entire sort of genre of uh, sort of anti-cult games hmm. where you have a team, and like you might have like there might be multiple teams, but no one knows what team anyone's on, apart from yourself. And you have to sort of um, sort of try and communicate with everyone and sort of work out who's on your team, who's not, and sort of lie about what team you're on, and and then sort of. Uh, complete your objective i'm surprised that that mechanic has not made it into more games because it's a really interesting Mm. mechanic but i imagine it's quite hard to implement though especially in in modern kind of games there there are there are game modes there's a there's a game called uh phantom i think a mod um or a, a mode for supreme commander where one i think one player is the phantom but you don't find out who it is and i can't remember the exact rules but it, it follows that kind of thing in it no one knows who the bad guy is and they've got to figure it out as they play the game and then pull together to tick them out yeah. um so there's like quite but, a few party games as well i've, I've yeah, taken part in it mm. never tends to make it never tends to make it into the forefront of an actual game apart from this um town of salem and probably a few of those, but I've never really heard of a a big AAA title embracing that style of gameplay. And it's interesting because it feels like there might be m- like more to be mined there. I think the the main issue really with it um, is quite obvious in Town of Salem. Once you play a few sort of hours, um, it it gets it's very reliant on people not trolling essentially. Right. Um, Right, unlike Dark does... Souls or something like that, where everyone tells everyone to jump off a cliff. Well, <laughs> yes, but like you need it's essentially a role play game, and it's core. Cool. Like you need everyone to play along, otherwise it's not going to it's not going to work, and no one's going to have any fun. Uh, but one one of the really nice things about it, like I've I've had played about forty hours of it so far, and especially with friends, sort of over Skype, and um, and some sometimes. Like you'll get like really fucked over, and like there it seems like you know how it goes. Like, it seems like there's no way that that was possible. Like you might sort of die um, without, or someone might come up with your um, like lie and trick you or something. And you, it feels really unfair. But the thing about it, because it's sort of anti-co-op, there's lots of teams sort of vying against each other, and but no one knows who what team everyone's on. Like. It, there's always someone who just made a really, really nice play, but right. to everyone else, it just looks like they're being a dick, essentially. <laughs> uh, it's that's can be really. So nice. is that probably is that is it the fact that it, the satisfaction seems to be very focused on on individuals rather than the whole group enjoying it together? Is that the problem, or is it the inherently unstable aspect of the fact that, like you say, trolls can ruin it very easily? Well, there's um, there's uh, the, there's two like factions essentially. There's the town, who are a group of um, so essentially good people who generally they have like investigative roles. So they can like determine what roles other people ha- are like, and that helps with sort of framing people and stuff, and sort of actually hanging the right person, which is important. Um, but uh, and then they go up against the mafia who are trying to kill the town members. But then there's also neutral guys who sort of um, throw it out. But um, 
it I mean, does really it, it really does remind me of of like going back to the classic kind of board game thing because when you sat mm. when I, I last played a board game a few uh, months well about a month ago with uh, with my wife and and a friend and we by the end of the game we were at each other's throats and i'm not i'm not a particularly competitive person when it comes down to it but I, the, it's it's interesting that i'm not shut your face lou i'm not competitive <laughs> um I, it's interesting that that a game on a PC can do that. I mean, I know when you talk about the CODs of the world and, you know, teenage angst and people, you know, getting really angry at the fact they're getting killed, it's a very different type of thing, this. This is a this feels almost like a personal attack, if you know what I mean. It yes, feels, it feels it, like... It can feel, yeah, I like I like the sound of it. I might even try and pick it up. I might put it on my no, wish list. Not just, this game is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, Mom. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wall hack, wall hack, etc., etc. Et um, su su Sudo's just um, just said that um, Gary's mod murder is like that. Yes, yes, it is. I, I don't even know Gary's mod had game mods. It does, uh, like uh, Pop Hunt. That's a big one. Mm. But murder. Uh, I must be the only person in the world who doesn't own Gary's mod. Oh, I got it free. It's, con <laughs> it's constantly on sale. I got I, it three I'd, ages ago, like years ago, with some something else. I, I still don't think I have it. I, like, I keep meaning to pick it up every time, and uh, every time I I've picked it, I've picked it up. I was, and, and I've, I've been in it a few times, and all all it looks like to me is just like literally a sandbox that you run around and you create objects in. But I obviously haven't tried any of the game modes or anything like that. So I think mm. the point is, it's a sandbox that you can do whatever you want, and you can make your own emergent games within yeah. the game. Um, well, I mean, much like um, Half Life Two DM was, I mean, in the end of the in the end, you'd stop killing each other and start playing like toilet volleyball or something, which was infinitely more fun. Or trying to climb up a stack of chairs and then fall off and die, and then someone shoots you with a rocket. Like you, you, your own little games would emerge out of that because of the physics, which was fantastic fun. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the same sort of engine, really. But yeah, it's yeah, I. I mean, I like murder, but it's it does have some issues. I feel. Would like you mean technical issues or um, people, well, people issues? Sort of design issues. It's a bit sort of, bit sort of plain, really. Right. There's not a, there's not as much that can sort of emergently happen, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'll. Uh, I, th I definitely will check that town of Salem out, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll stick it in my Steam list and hopefully get it on a sale at some point. It's probably about two pound anyway, or something, isn't it? I think it's about fiver. Like so, unless uh, Lou has any games to talk about this week, I'm afraid I don't. No. Um, I would. I, I was been thinking about playing Fallout again, um, playing Fallout Three. Um, but as for new games, I'm still waiting for GTA Five. Really, that I, is I, the only thing I'm waiting for. At the we've moment. got we've got some news for that later on, which I'm sure most of the people watching already know about, but. Um, so yes, let's move on to the way of the exploding list. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to let you do that every week now. Uh, <laughs> for a few weeks, I've been half week. joining in, but no. Um, mm. So yes, lists. Anybody? We're going to we're, we're a short list section where we just uh, briefly list things that we hate or we love about a particular thing in games. I know Josie is very good at coming up with things off the top of her head, so I'm going to put it back out there to chat to see if anybody including Josie, has uh, an idea for a list. I've got a few things written down. Again, not particularly happy with anything I've got this week. Um, but yeah, uh, have you guys got anything that you, you can think I've of? I've been trying to think of something today, but all of the good ones are the things we've done in previous shows, like the early shows, the favourite weapons and things. But I'll, I will mm. keep thinking. Yeah. I want to ask something which is going to actually get some interesting responses and not the same games that we always come up with that's exactly what i i think i mean the, what there's one thing i've got on my list which is uh, I'll, t I'll tell you it's um most interesting combat systems but yeah. have we talked we talked about weapons before so we may but then is that interesting you know list josie of said that, yeah list of favorite game only foods <laughs> what how what what does that how does that how do we even what? Well, a game only food would be like the um, the beef dinner that flies out of a bin when you kick it in Streets of Rage or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone eats chicken legs off the floor in games. Um, game <laughs> only foods. Let's do that one then. Yeah, oh yeah. my god. All right, okay. Um, the... Oh, I can't remember the name of it now. 
it was it's it's the the energy bars in um in deus ex oh the oh god Forgot I what they're called the name of them. i do remember the new coca-cola from fallout though that's a that's a staple throughout the series isn't it you can buy um like lights in cola bottles with like lights and make it look like new coca-cola i saw that somewhere Foods only found in games. That's the rule. That is the rule. Is, that is the only rule. Only found in games. So uh, we we can talk. I think we can throw brands in there. Yeah. This, is, this is a difficult one. This isn't. This isn't <laughs> fair. This is a bad idea, isn't it? Every week we we sit here and we go. Um, uh, come on, chat. Help us out here. But um, <laughs> zombies said bread, but that's not really fair. I know bread is you know I am bread or whatever it is. Ooh, maybe the cheese. Uh, Cheese wheels from Skyrim. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Quama <thinking> eggs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Quama <laughs> eggs from uh, Morrowind. Are they food. Yeah, you can eat them in Morrowind. Right. What the hell is a Quama? A Quama is a, a thing. Is it? <laughs> oh, really? Is <laughs> it? I'm sure you kill Quamas in in Morrowind, actually. Uh, oh, mystery yeah. meat from Wow. Yeah, that's a good one. Mystery, mystery meat. meat. You don't remember when you? I, I can't remember exactly where you get it from, but you you can pick up stacks of mystery meat and. I don't know if you can you eat it. Do you make it? I can't even remember where that comes from, but I do remember <laughs> it. Um, oh God! God, do you think with three of us would be able to? <laughs> we'll be able to do this. Thing is, I'm the sort of person who reads all of the um, the textures on the the, the bars mm. of chocolate and cans of coke and stuff in games, and I can't remember a single one. We've got we've got a vending machine in my game, and uh, our one of our designers has put in loads of subnet based like snacks in it. With little names, so they're they're not particularly great. He hasn't put that much effort and time into it, but it, it you know it's just funny to see them, like sub crunch crisps. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> sub crunch, yeah. A lot of the stuff is from Skyrim and, um, and Oblivion mm. because it, it normally you see it flying around the screen, like or you'll you'll accidentally steal some and all the guards will kick your head in because you're mm. you're clicking a bit too vigorously near the market stall and suddenly you've got a stolen melon or something. Well, yeah. I was thinking about the sweet roll from. Uh, Skyrim. Sweet rolls. See, yeah. sweet rolls. Uh, they exist in real life. That's not. A, it has to Dude, be. Oh right. Yeah. Has yeah. to be a like you know something that's only in that game or only in games. Ah, oh, this is really. Tricky. GTA's got to have something. GTA's got to have because they they they're known for taking oh. the piss out of brands, aren't they? Did that. I might have to move us on. You know. This is yeah. this is not very good uh, listening, unfortunately. <laughs> maybe <laughs> hashtag sub crunch crisps. <laughs> Get it started, Cop Broski. I like Get it uh, I like I like Josie's suggestion of slash twenty four. I think you have to have that as a drink, like an energy drink of slash twenty four. What? Uh networking thing. Come on, Chris. Your game's called Subnet, and you don't know what slash twenty four is. I can't see that in chat though. When did she say that? Just before sub crunch crisps. Is that is that like a, oh, a motion activated yeah. light? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he warned me about <laughs> it before the show actually. Um, so in case you have to go like this. Yeah. That's the symbol for turning the <laughs> fucking light back. It's alright, Lou does yeah. that anyway occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> occasionally I'll just have a little flail in the background. Yeah. Oh god. Come on. Come oh, on. Dude. Let's get a few more out of us. This is oh, difficult. No. This is a hard one. It really is. Um no oh, man, I don't play enough games. The, I don't the, see chat the helping fruit, either. The Come fruit, on, guys. Fruits in Pac Man. Oh, well, cherries. The pills. Yeah. I, I, they're not. Pills. They're just cherries. They haven't got a name. Yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah not. but the Pac Man cherries, they've got pixels in them. You wouldn't need a cherry with pixels in it in real life, would you? <laughs> a cherry with pixels? No. Yeah, a cherry made of pixels. That, that's a real. That's a shit cop out. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everything's made of pixels when you look at it on a screen. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, not made of pixels, but you know, is rendered to our eyes with pixels. Right? <laughs> Zombie's been looking at his Steam game list for See, inspiration. I, I could, I'm I could do, a, I could do a quick. You know what? I'm gonna have to do a quick. No, I'm not. No, no, it's cheating. Doing a search. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> there's there's so, things that you've just googled. The thing is, there's so <laughs> many as well. There's so many little things that the people put into games. These in like in little interesting food or mm, drinks yeah, or yeah. snacks or. I mean, they're never really a centerpiece. Right? I'm so trying to think of like uh, the, the, stu the stuff like like 
The Elf. um the wine uh, you know I'm all I'm thinking of is stuff from the Elder Scrolls series but the the wine what is it the the, the Cyrodiil brandy and there was the the wine as well Cyrodiil oh, brandy is the yeah. best one because you drink that and you just get fucked on it and then you can't do anything <laughs> yeah but your strength is like uh, <laughs> yeah it, yeah as soon as you as soon as you drink that you get like fifty extra strength so you can I use minus I, fifty into the, the amount of time I have spent walking home pissed out of my face because I've been over encumbered in Skyrim because I've, I've wanted that extra 50 no not Skyrim Morrowind to, to get that, that the equivalent of coming home with a traffic cone like, oh. yeah punching Lydia in the face <laughs> or whoever actually no I married the blacksmith in uh, uh, somewhere I was uh, I think I was an Argonian and I married the blacksmith in uh, Skyrim um, you know where the Thieves Guild is it's been that long since oh, I played it Riften yeah I married the blacksmith there and he was living in my house with me um, cool. Cool. So I had a, I had a homosexual relationship with a, a man in a game. In fact, I quite often have homosexual relationships with, with people in games for some reason. It's one of the things I enjoy Just doing. Try now, I guess, are you? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I have heterosexual ones as well, but you know, I was like, try and get everyone involved. Like, is, <laughs> is, is it Sultan in um, Dragon Age Origins, the, the uh, bisexual elf? He's he, he just he just shags everybody is, and everything. Isn't, isn't <laughs> Bioware staple now to have this uh, one a sexual relationship and two let you choose the alignments of the sexual relationship? Uh, so no, can you can't choose it. Only certain characters have certain possibilities. So Zoltan, for example, he's bisexual. So if you're male or female, you can go with him, um, mm -hmm. and you can also get other people involved as well from your party potentially if they're of a certain orientation, depending on yours. Or something like that. Um, Morrigan is she? I think she only has a heterosexual relationship. She's the sexy witch that I, I've referred to a few times, and uh, someone like uh, it, what's his name? Oh, the, he's he's one of the, one of the other guardians. One of the, not guardians. That's eighteen eighty six, isn't it? Grey guardians, grey grey wardens. That's it. One of the other grey wardens, Adrian or whatever his name is. He's you can only have. A, heterosexual relationship with him if you are female obviously i'm worried of the connotations that we're still talking about things you eat in games yeah I don't <laughs> know how we where we're going that. here i don't know how we got into that <laughs> yeah anyway i'm i'm happy with quammer eggs that's that's my that's my best one yeah i'm happy with uh yeah. cheese wheels to be honest i think cheese, we wheels, all, cheese wheels <laughs> yeah come on look at fallout fallout has got some new i said nuka cola i said nuka cola, nuka -Cola from fallout. Okay. but i'm sure there's food as well that's um nuked up that you you you, ha you die don't you you lose a bit of health or something uh, yeah you get all, pretty much all the food and the, the drink in the game gives you rads mm. oh yeah right let's move on because this is ridiculous we're just sat here can yeah, humming yeah. each other so yeah we've 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 made record time into the new section of the show this this week <laughs> We've had four, we've been on so online crazy. forty minutes and we uh, we're moving on to news. Usually we've got at least an hour or an hour and a half, but then again, all of us are usually play at least one game and we can talk about mm -hmm. it for a while. Right, so yes, um, news, gaming releases, upcoming stuff. Um, first of all, a few things that kind of come out of GDC this, uh, which is the Game Developers Conference. For those who don't know, uh, this this week there's a few residue articles that have, have appeared from it um source 2 uh, became free as an engine but it requires you to release your game on steam which isn't a bad thing as a pc developer because you're going to do that anyway however steam does take 30 percent, i think it is of your revenue um uh, so it's it's one of those things at the moment all of the big all of the big game engines unity uh unreal engine 4 it's not UDK anymore, is it? it's Unreal Engine 4. And um, Source 2 are now now all free with caveats. Un Unity seems to be the, the best deal of the lot of them in my eyes, commercially, as, a, as an indie dev anyway. Um, Unreal Engine 4 takes 5% of your commission after making $3,000. 5 5% of your gross commission gross, yeah. after making $3,000. Unity mm. is free. Full engine is free up to a hundred thousand dollars. After a hundred thousand dollars, all you have to do is subscribe to them or buy the engine, which is either seventy-five dollars a month or fifteen hundred dollars one-off payment. That's a really good that deal. That is an amazing deal for indies, I in mean, my eyes. 
It was a work already a very good deal to be honest well it was but then unreal engine came in with the 19 dollars a month subscription and since then they've realized we're not going to catch up with unity now unfortunately unity is Mm. i say unfortunately they're they're (laughs) they're pretty much becoming the microsoft and google of of their respective worlds now aren't they um but source 2 has got this caveat that basically instead of you 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 can release your end sorry you can release your game if you develop it with a source 2 engine on any platform you want, but you have to release it on Steam as well. Mm. Meaning that most of your sales are going to be through Steam, you're going to be paying them 30%, so it's not the best deal in the world. Presuming you still have to go through the green light process and still have to, to get yeah. one. So they, there's no, really, it doesn't give you a fast track to the to the Steam. It's, yeah, it's, it's really not terribly easy to get onto Steam at the moment. Um, mm. like it, it was almost easier back before Greenlight because you basically you sent them an email with the build and if they liked it you're on Steam Mm. whereas I mean that might take like six months but it would be a dumb deal Um, of course they may not like your game and you won't get on Steam um, which is the whole point that Greenlight came in but now that's just creating loads of um, loads of oversaturation really Um, I I mean there's there's 15-20 games a day coming out if not Mm. more now and it's 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 really devaluing it, I feel. But it's uh, it's the App Store, you know, the the, the mm. iPhone, iTunes, or whatever it's called, App Store, and you know mm. the Windows Phone App Store. They're all becoming like that. It's it, it's easy. To, it's easier to develop a game these days. So people are, you know, doing that. And there's a lot of trash out there because it's easy to develop a quick game. The yeah, worst one was the, the Xbox Live uh, Arcade. I think it was the, the quality of the stuff on there was just appalling. I remember skimming through it and seeing a, about 8,000 Minecraft clones, all absolutely terrible. Yeah. There's still a lot of that, though, and Steam's probably just as bad now, but at least it's the community saying thumbs up to it first. Mm. And there is some, um, what do they call it, there's some moderation on there, at least. that I've seen games being taken off Steam because they've either, which usually when they get some kind of D- DMCA, mm. DCMA, DCMA, DCMA takedown notice or something to that effect, um, um, yeah, I mean that happened with uh, was it War Z? I think. I mean, oh, really? It, yeah, the sort of Daisy clone that was really bad. Um, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm just sort of uh, bullshitting really, but um, I mean, it, it tends to it tends to take a lot for them to actually do anything about it, really, which is a sort of a problem with it. Um, there is a um, yeah, there's it, it's not it's not too bad certainly. So, Josie just asked, so what happens if you put it out on Steam, but Steam doesn't approve it? Um, it doesn't work that way. Um, you, you, the moment you have to get a green light, I don't think... There is a way to bypass green light, and that's getting with certain publishers. Um, mm-hmm. I think, for example, if I decided to publish my game with Team 17 or Mastertronic or someone who's got a deal you know, a deal going with Steam, they can, they can completely bypass the, the green light and authorise it to go live. Then it's their responsibility if your game contains something that's not uh, valid for Steam, you know, that, that is a, 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 that's, that's got illegal content or explicit content in it or anything like that. Um, if the you hot coffee mode. <laughs> if you what? Yeah. What does that even mean? So, uh, the, the San thing, Andreas. It was yeah, the uh, yeah. yeah. It was the, the the controversial sex mode in San Andreas mm. where you could have sex. Oh, That's what sex mode is. Close, have sex. Close, yes. It was called <laughs> coffee. You took the, yeah. uh, the 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 person on for hot coffee and end up giving them some hot coffee. Right. Well, did you actually see that? Because I did <laughs> yeah. do that a few times. I didn't see it happen though. You, you just saw the outside of the house. Am I I've, missing something here? Uh, I've seen uh, YouTube videos. I think there might have been a glitch involved. I, I oh, don't right. know. I never played it. But, yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I so, but uh, but if you went through the green light process, basically the community give you a thumbs up and then mm-hmm. you're on. Ste- Steam don't get involved unless they get some kind of takedown notice from a publisher or from from someone else. I, I believe. But there are obviously. I mean, there's there's a lot of. Um, uh, there's a lot of moderators on there. There's a lot of community moderators, and there's also a lot of what do they call them? The critics, uh, um, curators, curators. That's yeah. it. And I'm sure the curators have some kind of not say so, but I think they probably have a little bit of influence, especially some of the bigger ones. Well, I think uh, especially like I mean they they've brought in uh, ratings, 
So like you have like your ratings of positive, negative, uh, sort of thumbs up, thumbs down. I use um, them that's... quite a lot as a, as an observer. I yeah, do, yeah, yeah. I actually look at them and go, if it's mostly positive, I'll start reading the comments and I'll start looking mm-hmm. at the videos. If it's mostly negative, I usually just pass it by and not bother with it. I mean, in theory, that could actually fix a lot of the issues because obviously, as you say, people will only look at really positive things. Mm. And if something's overly negative, Steam may may decide that it's worth taking off of their platform but they've got they've got some like truly panned games that are just on there like either because they're done through a publisher like triple a or you know yeah. they just haven't bothered taking them down which is just a shame really and th- there's a lot of um sort of early access stuff that's been sort of um been like cancelled or something and it's still on there making money yeah, yeah. I, yeah, and, and thing is, usually it's publishers, isn't it, that are making that mm. money? Or, or, I mean, it may be individuals, indies, that are making the money. But at the end of the day, they've published a just because it's early access. There's a warning on there. I don't oh, particularly, true, yeah. I don't particularly buy into early access that often. But people like Steve, for example, Steve loves that absolutely. Nearly every game he talks about is in early access, <laughs> and he's he's always he's always buying them. And he's some people like that. It's fine if you, mm. if, yeah, you no. if you're at least aware that things might go wrong. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Games like Prison Architects and Space Engineers, you know, they've all got little issues with them, but they're generally fairly complete games. So I don't think, I, it's, I don't think it's a problem. I think it is important that the developer to keep developing. I mean, there, there's some that have just abandoned the project, project, and when it's not even like half finished, buggy, and that just it's it's really not just not how you should develop a game. I feel. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you there, and I, I'm not going to release my game on early access. I'm going to release a demo. You know, mm. I'm going to do it old school. I'm going to release a demo, <laughs> let people play it. Obviously, there'll be bugs and issues with it. It's a demo at the end of the day, and then I'm going to release the full game. You know, if we get to that point, if it's if it's viable. If you're going to do it really old school. You need to release a rolling demo first, a non-playable <laughs> demo. Yeah, with that's uh, how it's, that's how you do it really old school. Chip tune music about the t- yeah. about, about three kilobytes in size on a cover tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going uh, back to the Source 2 stuff, is there any information about the engine itself? It seems to be they've, they've released information about how to, you know, what how to, how to get it and use it, but not what actually it contains. Like, the only thing I've seen regarding that is that um, screen grab of Left 4 Dead 2 that they showed using the Source, Source 2 engine. But I'd, I don't know anything about the engine itself. I have to be honest with you, because I, it's not been uh, easily accessible to me. It's not an option I looked at when I first started looking at game dev. Uh, so I haven't. I don't know much about it. We did actually say, well, I've talked about Unreal Engine and I've talked about uh, uh, Unity, their pricing models. But I believe, from my understanding... So, oh no, I did. I did talk about. It, didn't I say so Source Two is totally free, apart yeah. from you yeah. have to put it on Steam. So they and therefore they take a thirty percent cut. Yeah, so it's arguably actually more. But then again, if you think about it, if you look at something, if in fact no, actually it's the best deal of the lot of them when you think about it, because you're going to be putting your game on Steam anyway. So whatever commission or whatever price you have to pay mm, for yeah, Unity yeah. or Unreal, you're going to have to pay thirty percent on top of that anyway. But Steam Steam's cut is thirty percent. So you, I don't know if that's on top, but you have to pay thirty percent any anyway to Valve. Hmm. So yeah. if they're just taking that regardless, then it's essentially a free engine. Yeah, yeah. And there's no yeah. caveats at all. I don't think there's no well, unless they've been revealed since I read this article that uh, I pasted in chat earlier. I haven't heard anything. No, no. Mm. So uh, moving on to the next, uh, the next thing, I. I, I, this is for Lou's benefit because I know he's a bit of a spuffer when it comes to this guy. I watched um, John Carm John Carmax. Is that right? Is that yeah. John it's John Carmax. Why, yeah. why did that sound wrong? John, John Romero. Are you going to say John Romero? Uh, yeah. Are they both called John? Jesus. They are both called yeah. John. I think yeah. it's about different. Right, right. Anyway, John Carmack. I watched his um, mobile Oculus uh, virtual reality keynote at GDC, uh, which again oh. I'm going to paste the YouTube link into chat. Um, I, I sat there and I stopped what I was doing and I just watched the guy and I was like, I didn't understand He's a amazing. fucking word that he was saying. <laughs> I didn't understand a single thing, but I learned a few things. I learned what a shim is, which, which I, I'd, never, I'd never heard 
referred to before. And I've actually <laughs> seen that since in a lot of the debug code that I use for things like SSIS and all the other stuff that I do in my job, weirdly. Anyway, um, yeah, I saw, um, I-, I watched his keynote. It was about two hour, an hour and a half, two hours long. And I was just like, there's something about this guy that's charismatic you know, and interesting. Yeah, what I love about Carmack is that he goes on the stage and he just talks whatever the hell he likes and he doesn't care if he needs to pander to the audience or anything. He just talks at his level. Yes. And it's just mesmerizing because the guy just knows his shit. Yeah. Like, he, he is a and true he's not, genius. Even he's not though monotone I criticize, about it either. No, even though I criticize the, the fact that the best things he's ever done have been bugs. <laughs> like literally, the best games that he's ever made have been <laughs> the result of him doing things wrong. He is still an absolute genius, and I love to listen to him. I really, I haven't seen this yet, but I will be watching it because, yeah, you're right. He's it's, mesmerizing. It's really interesting VR stuff as well. I just want to say hello to uh, to Emma, by the way, who's just joined the chat. It's no one I know, but she wants to know if it's live, and it is. Hello, um, and hello to everyone else who's recently joined as well, Mister Mister Llamas and. Mr. Llamas? Yes, Mr. Llamas. And uh, The Scars That Show. Nice, nice name. Uh, yeah, so get that watched if you're interested in anything like anything to do with virtual reality. You're a developer or you're a game developer. It's just a really cool... I don't know, the guy just knows his stuff and, you know, as I said, I, did, I'm, I consider myself fairly educated when it comes to game <laughs> development, but my God... No idea what he was talking about. <laughs> Tell you what, when, when you watch one of his um, one of his GDC speeches, you come away feeling cleverer, even mm. though he's way cleverer than you, because oh, you've yeah. sat through it all and been interested in it. It makes you feel really clever. I like that. I, I I wouldn't say it made me feel clever. It didn't make me feel stupid either, though. So he's doing something right, whatever. However, he, he approaches it. Well, that makes a change, doesn't it? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on slowly. Onto penises. Okay. Now, um, a you game move I've talked... slowly onto a penis now, Chris. It's, 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 a, it's a story I read today, actually. Um, uh, the, the State of Decay, which is that game that I recommended to you that you played for about 12 mm. minutes, Lou, uh, which is the zombie survival game. It's kind of an open-world sandbox. Apparently, they outsourced most of their art uh, and texturing to a third-party developer, and they've only... Because they're doing a revamp of it, they're doing a, a remake, they've... They've found an uncanny number of penises drawn onto the textures, which I think is brilliant. And also, if I was the if I was the developer, I'd be like, "What? This is this is surely an a, a, an issue, you know, contractual issue here." Are these real penises? Are they like graffiti penises, like the ones we used to draw in people's textbooks at school? I believe they're graffiti penises. But, okay. Well, I know actually. You know what? I don't know, and I can't tell you because they've updated the old version. They've re- removed all of the textures from the old version, so even my version doesn't have them in anymore. So I can't see the the these fabled penises. But apparently, there's loads of them, and I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> I just thought that was a cool little story that came out today. Uh, I'm just going to put the ch- thing into chat. So, on to, on to Lou's, uh, Lou's baby child here. There's a few GTA 5 stories. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear this. I've not been keeping up. I basically, I kind of threw my dummy out the pram when I heard that it had been delayed again because I am literally waiting to play this game that I've, pl- I've completed it on the Xbox 360, but I want to play this game in first person. I really, really want to play this game in first mm. person. I want to walk through that beautifully detailed world in first person. Yeah. There's no other way I can say it. <clears throat> Apart from first and person. I, and I really hope that it feels like a proper first person experience. I, I don't want it to be, you know, I don't want it to be crap where like you try and look up and you can only look so far up or something like that. They'll ruin it for me. It has to be a proper first person experience with a mouse and keyboard. And if they deliver that, then, you know, it's worth buying it again to me. Um, Sorry, I was just reading some things in chat and I'd just like to apologise very quickly for Um, any females that were offended by me saying penises. But I'm going to say penises as many times as I like. I'm sorry, it's not, it's not intended to be sexist. It's just a story that happens to be on a a games news website. Um, Yeah, so basically the Rockstar uh, heists mode has come out on console. That was out, I think, this week sometime. A couple of days ago, came Mm. out live. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think yesterday. Yesterday it was, came out, yeah. And in typical game big game going live issues uh, mm. they've 
they've had server issues. Apparently they've been fixed now, but the internet was up in arms about it. And again, I just thought I'd uh, bring that up because it's, it's. I know Lou wanted to talk about GTA 5. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm yes. not interested in multiplayer at all, by the way. I don't what? care about this heist shit. I, I really don't. What Do, do you not want to play... I don't want to play online all. with people yeah. anymore, ever. <laughs> Apart from I, you, but I don't that's want to... what I mean. You're not. We can't. You and I and Steve, the three of us, can't play it on the entire <laughs> world. No, but of GTA we can. 5. We can hopefully ignore people, though. Yeah, the, you can. There must be some way of. I know they'll obviously still interact in some way, but we could form a, a crew or a gang and go and do stuff ourselves. And if people want to in, involve themselves, that's fine. We'll just shoot them in the face, but. You know, I, I I definitely want to play that. I haven't wanted to play a multi-player game so much for a long time. In fact, you're really not up for that, Lou. That's nope, it's atrocious. Not at all. I think you can have uh, you can have private games, but yeah, I mean, I've I've been waiting for the PC release since like well, to, it originally came out. So I know I'm quite hyped for so it. So have you not played it then? No, no. Right. I don't have a console. So you haven't done, you haven't played the game at all. No, I can't. So. Um, right. Oh well. I said I, I'm. I'm. I've got it already for PS4. Uh, no, right. three PS3. I bought it for when it first came out. Obviously, it's been released on PS4. It's coming out on PC. I'm going to get it on PC. I think because it's, mm. you know, <clears throat> it's it. It just. It, I do want to try the first person stuff, but I wanted to play the, the multiplayer. But I have to be honest. If Lou is not for playing multiplayer and. That probably means that most of our mates probably won't buy it for the multiplayer aspect. I don't think I'll bother. I might as well just keep it on, keep it on um, PS3. Am I like the perfect storm of apathy here? If I don't play it, then no one plays well, no, it. Well, no, no. I'm just saying that you know, if there's there's that's one less people in our crew or online multiplayer crew or whatever you want to call it. So I just I just think it. I think people would be like, oh, well, whatever. But I don't want to play with other people either. I want to play with you guys. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. So. Pull your finger out. Okay. Change your mind. Get okay. on it. Well, I will be getting it, so I might give it a go. Right. Um, I, again, I'm not a I'm not a Minecraft player, but a story came out today that Turkey is potentially going to ban, and it's it's apparently quite far into the court process, um, banning Minecraft because it's too violent. Yeah. Can can I can I read this out? Um, the ministry is reportedly concerned its children may confuse the game world with the real one and start torturing animals. Yeah, I, I, but did it, <laughs> I, it's the blocks. Yeah, <laughs> I, if it was hyper realistic, yeah, possibly. But I mean, sure, this is this has got to be some kind of slight on Microsoft or something like that. It's got to be some political stance rather than a rather than a violence in video game stunts because I've I've looked up I've tried to find out what games are banned in Turkey and I can't find a list anywhere of what of games that are banned and you would expect the you know GTA you know um manhunt all all the, think, the typical games that are banned everywhere to be banned there but I, it doesn't even have a list anywhere I can't find I think it's really just cuz it's so aimed at children like there's I mean there's like schools that cover it on the syllabus you know in like a, I think it's America but um, yeah, because it, it's a children game that is it does have violence. Like you build weapons and you kill things, and like they kill you. And like there, there is there's violence. You can mod you can mod a lot of violent stuff into it, really, um, very easily. But um, but really, Minecraft. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's I, not it, it's, it is. It is. I mean, you, you know, kids will pick up some toys and hit mm, one toy yeah, with the yeah, other yeah. toy. They'll pretend they've got guns and stuff. That, that is just what kids do. But they do it because they're influenced by TV and media and they do, everything. They, yes. know it's, they know it's fake, though. They don't they are, do it do, for do, real. Do, do, well, the argument always is, isn't it? And when you, when it comes down to it, when you think about the brass tacks of it, it's not the it's not an individual. It's not a societal problem in general. That if people, if if an individual who has potentially has you know some kind of reasoning to to hurt someone or mm, yeah. or has you know uh, some kind of mental condition that may what make them want to hurt someone or not understand the connotations of hurting someone or something to that effect then that's the that's the problem isn't it it's not it's not the society or the country but they're just covering the backs if anything mm, you know that, yeah, that's yeah. all it is it's it's 
ticking boxes and but mm. I, I just think my minecraft seems to be the craziest of games to me you say you might be able to mod things into it but the, yeah no, they don't even look anything like real people you know it's no no fair enough that the yeah. the bipeds you know they've got legs and arms but that's as I far think it's as it more goes, the animals really. isn't it it's the cows and chickens mm. and stuff which you can kind of so why is zelda is zelda being banned in these because you can go and beat chickens up mind you there is a repercussion of beating chickens up in in zelda you get ganked by the chicken god you, yes exactly really? that. <laughs> what, what, in, in um uh in i've only i've only tried to beat the chickens up in a few of them in ocarina of time and in uh link to the past whenever you hit a chicken too many times the whole screen just gets filled with chickens and you just get you just wow get hit quite a few times and it's it's a deterrent but i think that's a that's a little comedy thing in there isn't it it's uh you can't kill a chicken so presumably you just beat no them up. you can't you can't so you kill, can't the kill animals in minecraft you act you kill them to like you kill a pig and you get a piece of bacon mm. i mean it just in that sense it is sort of aping real life like you would you do kill pigs like they they die and then you eat meat like that's yeah. where that comes from i'm pretty so, sure uh, that turkey are famed for kebabs <laughs> So at some point, mm. someone in Turkey is having to do this for a, a career, and I, mm. I say to you that this might turn Turkey into vegetarianism. If it, Maybe. Uh, I mean, if the thing no, about... one, no one knows. <laughs> it's no more gyros. Just... <laughs> it's no more gyros. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm sorry, but I think it's it, it, it oh, is no. it is political mm. correctness gone yeah, mad, yeah. isn't it? it? It is. I mean, we we live in a pr in a nanny state in England. At the end of the day, people we have to have warnings on everything these days. Don't smoke because you might die. You know, don't do this because of this. Fair enough. You know, I understand. I understand that these uh, again to cover people's backs, but at. We've got, we've got. Even he, even in this country, we have Peggy ratings, or that the U Europe Europe in general has Peggy ratings as the BBFC ratings in order to cover the backs even more. Does Turkey not conform to those rating systems? I can't. I haven't done enough research to know that, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm sure they have some kind of rating system, but I, I don't think it's very well mm. organised. I'm sure. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. I've never been to Turkey either. The, the problem really is that they. It. Minecraft is being marketed to children, and so mm. if that rating system is to be used, then it can't be marketed to children. Therefore, there's no point. Mm. I, I get. It's I, a weird one. I, I get. I yeah, get that. So. I get that. But I mean, don't rate it. Don't market it to children. Then you know, yeah. give it a Peggy rating of sixteen or eighteen or whatever it or whatever <laughs> they need to give it. If you're killing remember, pigs and that's a problem to people, I, give I them a remember piggy being rating. incensed that the Duke Nukem had an 18 rating. <laughs> I used to be back in oh. the day. I mean, I, I, I got incensed by it. A, a, a Commodore 64 game called Jack the Ripper, right? <laughs> it had an 18 on it, and I was like, I was, I felt naughty playing it. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get past the first bloody room because every time I tried to do anything, it either crashed or I slipped up on some soap and broke my neck. Or you got distracted <laughs> and started killing people. In real uh, life. No. Well, yeah, oh, of course I did that. Oh, always. Every yeah. time I played that game, I, I had the urge to murder everybody. <laughs> well, there Jules is a... just written in chat, mm -hmm. but Minecraft Peggy 18 just. Yeah. I know, I know, but come on. Just... Right, let's move so, on. Sorry, Sam. Uh, this, is, this is actually I mean, quite exciting. Sorry, sorry. Sam. Sam no, but there, there is that game, uh, Hatred, that was actually taken off of Steam. Um, it's Hatred. You, you won't look it up. It's. Uh, um, it's a sort of uh, mass murder sim, <laughs> essentially. Sorry. That, yeah. That, that sentence in itself appeals the to me. The character is a mass killing villain who hates humanity and begins a genocide crusade. This sounds a lot like um, Postal, doesn't it? Mm, yes. The Postal it's series. Sort of coming from that, I think. I said that, ma that manhunt. Did you ever play yes, that? Yes, it was. Here put back on Steam. Yeah. But, that was uh, a crap game, but it was very. Uh... <laughs> yes, yes. It? it was banned in a few countries. Quite nasty. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's... okay, I understand that we shouldn't really be glamorising this kind of stuff, but it yeah. is a computer game. Oh, God, it is pretty violent, that. Yeah. How is that back on Steam? <laughs> Gabe Newell saw it and you know, didn't want the negative press, I think. So... It, he's unrepentant, though, the, the protagonist. That's the, That'll be the main problem yeah. here. Yeah, it's... It, there's... I think there's yeah there's emotional baggage. I think a lot of a lot of violence in sort of media, if there's no emotional emotion to it, it's fine. Mm. But as soon as like you have like torture, sh 
torture scenes where someone's like screaming for help or something like then the problems start coming in you know that does happen in gta 5 that was one of the big things it was called up on there is a, a torture scene where you basically inflict the torture yeah and yeah. it does it it's it is quite harsh actually mm. and i still uh, find it funny no the but, thing is that that's that's the argument isn't it is is you know you'll have some you know you'll have some well, left wing or right wing or whatever you'd call it you have li liberals or what i don't know i don't i don't know i understand pol political sides but you have some people who will who will be offended just by the virtue of you saying that just by saying yeah. uh, if the, if you can imagine somebody in the world they exist you know people yes. get offended yeah. by things and there are people like me and lou who don't get offended by pretty much yeah. any i mean i get offended uh, occasionally if I, I get offended by stuff that's too politically correct because I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> I think it's utterly ridiculous that mm. people can't make their own decisions, you know. But I feel, I feel like I'm ranting or rambling a little bit now. Mm. So uh, moving on to the next one, this is a bit lighter on a bit lighter note. Um, Squeenix, Square Enix have released a survey which I filled in this morning. I don't normally fill these things in, but uh, I was quite excited because uh, it, the survey is about asking consumers what game they should develop next final fantasy 7 remake that's exactly <laughs> what i put get it filled in get it filled <laughs> it's, in it's massive this form's huge i just want to write one it's thing three in. it's three pages long as well 22, so. okay, 22 questions so um squeenix uh final it, fantasy is in uppercase why is that i don't know it's it's all about th anyway i filled it in um I filled it in and I put it at the end of it because it's the last question they ask is is what what game do you want? And they asked uh, they asked what's your favourite game from Square Enix and I put Deus Ex, not Final Fantasy VII. Mm. Square Enix didn't do that. I just did that and then they. Oh, oh, oh. they Deus stay Ex. on it now though, don't they? At the end of the day. Mm, um, so I put Deus Ex and then they had a whole page on why do you like Deus Ex? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? How do, how could we improve it? You know, etc. etc. And uh, I put in the last box, which was what game do you want us to develop next? Was Final Fantasy VII remake HD remake or um, the Deus Ex universe game? And I, I copped out a bit by asked, putting two things in there. But do you have thought, a favorite um, Square Enix game, Sam? Um, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really play many. I guess probably Deus Ex. Yeah. Um, there's um, there's quite a lot of Square Enix games in terms can... of the sort of, yeah. I know. Maybe I I haven't played sort of Final Fantasy or anything. Uh, really. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's a whippersnapper <laughs> though, isn't he, Sam? He's he's only he's only young. He hasn't uh, he hasn't probably didn't experience the whole Final Fantasy VII craze no when we were kids. Well, then again, I don't follow Final Fantasy VII at uh, Final Fantasy these days either. I don't. I can't be asked with Final Fantasy eighteen. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, but no one no one plays them anyway, do they? Tiffa's granddad or whatever it's called. You know, I, it doesn't. I don't actually. They're not even related, are they? There's usually similar people named in the games, but they're not. The games aren't related in any way, shape, or form. Mm. Just Cause 2 is awesome. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? I can't even say your name. Biv Bivil, 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 Bivil. Oh, yes. Just Just Cause 2 is awful. In terms of a, in, t in terms of all the other Square Enix games, anyway, it's awful, in, in my opinion. I wouldn't agree. No? no, no, no I, I'm not saying like, it's a bad game. I'm saying it's awful in comparison to the others. It, I like I mean, it. It's, it's definitely sort of different. That's for sure. So I played the first one, and I, I was enamoured by the fact that you could uh, para, paraglide off the back of, um, mm. off the back of, well, you could do all sorts of stuff, couldn't you? You could you could paraglide down uh, things, and you, what's it called when you attach yourself to the back of a car, and then you is it just paragliding? Uh, parasail, I think. Parasailing, parasail? yeah, yeah parasail. Para, para something. Mm. But yeah, I, uh, big bro, little big bro versus little bro. There you go. Anyway, it's not awful. Uh, Sorry, I do take that back. I have. <laughs> I, I did enjoy playing the game. It's just it's not it's not the best it, of all the Square Enix games. It does have it does have like it gets boring and there's not it's not terribly visceral. It's mm. um there is like there's gameplay to it, but it like eventually you end up just shooting things. And... I found that about I don't know if it's a Square Enix game, but I found that it's a similar kind of concept to Mercenaries. 
and I played Mercenaries 2 on the PS3 and that wow. just got to a point where I was just doing the side missions and everything was the same and I was just shooting people although it had loads of cool little mechanics in it it was just like oh, yawn lay on you know so uh, I, what, what would you say then Lou Final Fantasy 7 yeah yeah I definitely I, I know that there'll never be a HD remake they'd have to do the game do the game from scratch do because it. they lost all of the files do it yeah. but uh yeah I would like to see that and I kind of wouldn't in another respect because I know they would do voiceovers and voiceovers just can't happen they can't do voiceovers I don't want to hear Cloud speak I don't want to hear Barrett do his ham Mr. T yeah. impression. Have you have you heard the um you've seen the the gate I've um, seen I've been children. You haven't? No. Nah. Because Cloud speaks in that. He doesn't speak I know much. He does. But I haven't seen it. I can't even remember what he sounds like, I have to be honest with you. But we talked about this before, didn't we? It's like hearing Dennis the Menace speak, it's a bit wrong, you know? <laughs> you shouldn't really shouldn't have to do that. Mind you, you on a live action Dennis the Menace, imagine speech bubbles every five seconds, it'd be a bit wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Josie's getting all up uppity about our opinions and saying oh, things that okay. she doesn't. We don't agree. She doesn't agree with. Well, you should come on the show more often, Josie. If you that's don't agree. why we exist, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yes. Yeah, so Square Enix uh, form. Go and fill it out and put in Final Fantasy VII, and let's get that shit going. Yes. Mm. Even if I, th- there's no reason why they couldn't, they would make a ton of money on that if even if it was just from new people who haven't played the final fantasy 7 like a uh, final fantasy franchise or, or final fantasy 7 people would still buy it because of the hype that would surround it oh yeah, yeah. they would still oh, yeah. buy it even I'm, if they hated I'd it, it. Yeah. yeah exactly it's yeah. not everyone's cup of tea i mean sam our, our other host he doesn't he's not mm. into that kind of turn-based battling he didn't really get mm. into the story he, he kind of half-heartedly played it yeah. you know but yeah <laughs> Um, right, so the next one, um, feel real mask for Oculus Rift, which is a yeah. smell and feel uh, device that you can use with the Oculus Rift to immerse you. In the it looks atmosphere. terrifying. It looks like some weird black face with like a mouse sort of thing with lips. Yeah, it. I, I think at the moment the way that it works is it's working on smell, but they're developing the feel part of it, so the wind and the rain, and I, I'm not sure how well that's going to work, especially with electrical equipment around. But no, it's, uh, it's again going to be going to be interesting yeah, to see it. Yeah, it, it mm-hmm. is interesting. I'm not entirely sure I'd want something. I, I'd prefer something which generated smells and whatever rather than had like cartridges with a few random smells in it. There's only mm-hmm. um, six or seven smells as well. Yeah. One of them's metal. Mm. By the way, what, what does metal smell like? Yeah, that metallic like, tang of like coppery sort of smell. All I can imagine is mm. metal filings being fired into your eyeballs. You know? <laughs> 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 oh, oh. <laughs> I think isn't it like really a sign that you can? This? I think it's a sign that you've been poisoned if you like taste metal. That's um, essentially not good. It's it's definitely not good. No, it's not. I, I, um, I've seen better things. I, have you seen the one with the uh, wingsuit sort of thing, where you basically you wear the Oculus Rift and you're laid on a board and you've oh, got a flap. Wow. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like a bird simulator. Oh, so you lay, you lay you lay on a board wow. on your chest, and you've got your hands in these wings, and you flap to fly, <laughs> and you can <clears throat> steer it. And there's a fan in front of it, and as you go faster, the fan blows faster. Mm. So you're in the rift and you're getting this sensation of wind blowing at you and you're flying. It looks amazing. Mm. It looks up. I'm going to find it. So it doesn't. There. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> you, you look like a prat on that. <laughs> um, it's birdly. Um, so th- there was one other thing that's come out from Oculus that I've uh, I was particularly interested. In. Not Oculus, sorry, um, VR in particular, and it was a, a game that I heard about today. But it's based around the... Is it Burt Reynolds? Not Burt Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds' film uh, Buried. Shut up. <laughs> totally different. Um, the, the, uh, have you seen that? Buried. Oh, it's, yes, I have. Yeah, yes, it, yes. It's a 90-minute film with Ryan Reynolds buried in a coffin in the ground on his phone. That's it. But it's really quite high, you know, high tension. Anyway, mm. there's, there's this... Someone's developing a game where you're buried in a coffin and the intention is, is to get out. And I think that's a brilliant idea. That is that immersion. That is immersion. Mm. And imagine Ooh. kind of losing yourself in that. And but there, there's some screenshots on the um, uh, on, uh, on the article. I don't think I could. I couldn't handle that. We've, we've got a we've got a yeah. um, 
Because someone's claustrophobic here, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm. I, everyone gets a little bit claustrophobic, surely. I'm. Mm. I'm all right with that, actually. I'm, I mean, I don't. I don't think I'd panic, but I feel uneasy. I think if I was in a closed oh, space. Oh yeah, definitely. But I know the thing is, I know that I could separate that. I could separate the. <laughs> So you don't even need to do it. Lou does. Lou will do it for you. He'll, he'll turn you. He'll turn your lights on from where he is. Yeah. That is that em- emotive. He's got like that a handle come out on the other side. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I like it. I think that's a really cool, interesting way because we we've talked about yeah, the fact that VR, totally VR cool. is not suitable for high motion stuff. Stuff where you're jumping, mm. you're changing heights, where you're you're moving from side to side. In fact, um, Carmack goes into that in quite a lot of detail on that keynote that he did that I pasted earlier oh, mm-hmm. it's it's re- really interesting to listen because you can you can hear it from the like literally from the horse's mouth mm. him saying exactly why VR doesn't work exactly what it is good for at the moment where it will be in 10 years time or whatever he's a he's a true scientist this guy isn't we, he? which he is weird because Gabe about. Newell said that there was a hundred percent well a zero percent um incidence of people getting sick in the um the, the V5 VR thing I think that when you hear Carmack talk about it in technical terms and then Gabe Newell just goes, zero percent, no one ever got <laughs> sick in this because it's awesome, now buy it. Yeah. Like, who do you yeah. believe? The well, thing is, is he, it, it, when he came on stage, he actually, he, Carmack, he, he talks about it in a way that this is my opinion, this isn't the opinions of Oculus, this is my professional, he doesn't even say professional, he just says, this is my opinion, yeah, and yeah. this is what I've learned, I'm going to talk about things in, a, in as frank a way as I can. And he, he talks about things that are negative for VR, he talks about things oh, that yeah. are positive for them, he, he talks about them with passion though, and I don't think a single person who watches that would take away, take anything negative away from it though, you know, and and, and it's just limitations, really, rather than yeah. negativeness. And he's, like, posi- he's positive about it as well. I mean, there's the Dev Kit 2, I think, the, the new one they're working on, that has three. motion tracking. Uh, is it three? Uh, anyway, the one with uh, motion tracking, so you can it tracks you as you move around the room. Oh, D- DK2 yeah, does that. The- yeah, yeah, DK2 D- does to a, to, a, to a degree, but I mm-hmm. think the, uh, the, the Steam one actually has laser nodes yes, that go yes, in the room yes. and basically you can walk around the room and you can it mm. maps the room itself so if you walk near a wall suddenly like beep, it'll show yeah well it'll show like a holodeck sort of grid that comes into right, your game okay. to show you that you get near an obstacle oh, yeah that, but if you do it. something if you do something quickly though you're still going to hit your head off a wall aren't you if you're, <laughs> <Yeah>. you're <laughs> whatever i think it takes into account if you're moving quickly then it'll show it earlier but it's uh it, it basically they want to get you up and mo- walking around the room mm. whereas That's oculus great. have been very much if you fall over this thing on your head then we're responsible and so <laughs> just don't do it please is that it is that all you wanted uh, to say yeah 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 the second you hear me typing and doing something <laughs> pr- production related you stop bloody talking well, no it just has Useless. what happens that's all i had to say about that right um so the next one again you're not interested in this lou you hate me talking about it but i it's my it's my pet project and i'm very <laughs> much looking it, forward to it stop apologizing metal, and do it metal gear solid um five coming up you're going to be able to transfer your saves from ground zeros to oh. Metal Gear Solid 5, but you're only going to be able to do it on the same platform. So when I say platform, you, you, if you're on a PS3, you can transfer Ground Zero's PS3 to uh, either a PS3 uh, Phantom Pain or a PS4 Phantom Pain. Same for Xbox, Xbox 360 or Xbox One from the Xbox 360. Um, and PC is just Steam, you know. I, I don't even know if Ground Zero's is out yet. I'll be honest with you, I haven't paid any attention. I think it is. But anyway, yes, I just thought I'd quickly mention that for anyone who cares. I don't particularly care because I'm probably going to get Phantom Pain on PC and uh, mm. I've got, I've already got Ground Zeroes on PS4, which is the only game I've got for PS4, so maybe I should get it for PS4. I don't know. I'll make my mind up at a later date. Mm. Okay. I, I'm not sure what that means, though. I'm not sure what you'd be able to transfer with your saves because you don't do that much, really, in Ground Zeroes. I reckon, Zeroes. well, isn't Ground Zeroes touted as a bit of a demo? And it will, will mm. that not have... Will Phantom Pain not have the Ground Zeroes content in it already? So if people haven't played Ground Zeroes, they'll still be able. To... Gr- that, Ground that Zeroes, yeah, Ground mm. Zeroes is a section, a small, a mm. very small well, section yeah. of the Phantom Pain world. Well, there you go then. So it'll basically yeah. be if you have already completed that, you'll start at the end of that. Otherwise, you'll have to go through that bit as part of the 
It's fun and mm. pain. I imagine. I mean, it doesn't really sound worth it. No, no. It, I mean, it's a nice to have, but I, I don't see, mm. I don't see any real. If anything, it, it sounds like a concession to the for the fact that they're saying yes, it is kind of a demo. Yeah, maybe. Well, no, we know mm. that they, we, they've said that. They're yeah. not. They're not hiding it. They said this is a thirty-pound demo or sixty-pound, forty-pound demo or whatever it is. Fanboys yeah. like me are going to buy it, though. I mean, you know, mm, I, I yeah, whinge yeah. about. I whinge about the fact, you know, PC games or games in general are expensive, and I talk about going on sales and buying things cheaply mm. and getting stuff for free. It's brilliant, but there are some games that I will always buy because I'm in love with them. I think so. It is. Yeah. I, I love those games, whether they're good or not. Grand Zeroes wasn't worth thirty quid, but I paid for it, and I don't regret it because I got I got my fix of Metal Gear for you know for oh, yeah. for that. Well uh, done. Right, next one. Yeah. Not strictly gaming news, but has been going around in the gaming kind of uh, circles. Is this new Apple Watch that's come out? Now, have you any of you have you two heard about any of this? Um, yes, uh, I saw I that it's going to cost up to ten grand. Yeah. Yeah, up to ten thousand dollars. Minimum is three hundred and fifty dollars, but you need an iPhone to use it. So it's just a, it's just basically another screen for your iPhone, isn't it? I, I mean, I, I I haven't again. Who I'm, wears a watch? Who who cares about? You, you don't need. A yeah, new you Apple don't product. need anything on your wrist when you have a phone. <laughs> like, it's it's pointless to just. And like I I saw on Twitter. Or a flock. Yeah, yeah. A flock. <laughs> it's a flock. Yeah, fan club. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I saw someone on Twitter talking about it. Like, like you, you, all it'll do is like it'll beep. You'll look at it. It'll say a, a little notification will come up saying your phone is ringing, and then you'll get your phone <laughs> out of your pocket and then answer it. Like, or you'll be talking into oh, your wrist and you'll be looking like a. a wow, well, yeah. But then yeah. again, didn't people say that about mobile phones? Look at this, hey, yeah, on the yeah. wireless. <laughs> The thing, the weird thing is, though, that I I know what's going to happen with this. People are going to get this, and then they're going to be, oh, what what time is it? And they'll get the phone out of the. <laughs> yeah. They'll, they will do that. Yeah. Right. You know, that, the first thing when someone asks me what the time is, I reach for my phone. Pseudo's just mentioned the Pebble as well. Now, I, I this passed oh, me yes. by. It was a Kickstarter that kicked off a while back, and it's some kind of, it, it, as far as I understand, it's some kind of like fitness watch or something to that effect. It's the same sort of thing. It's kind of a smartwatch, yeah. I but think it, it was yeah. e-ink though, the original one, so it was very um, low power cons- uh, consuming. Right. Um, I, it's got some kind of uh, it, it, it broke some kind of Kickstarter records or something to that effect when it when it when it went off. But I mean, I, d- I don't get this. I'm not a gadget person, so I'm not the best place person to really talk about it. I don't even like. I'm not even an early adopter really when it comes to things. It's, very few things I'll, I will get involved with early on, but ten thousand dollars for a watch? You're paying for apparently it's yeah. twice as good as gold. That's what that's what they state. It's it's eighteen carat oh. gold, which is twice as good as right. normal okay. normal carat. You know, nine carat, obviously gold. But isn't I think twenty four is the best. Twenty twenty four is pure gold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I, I it can't be pure gold though, because then it wouldn't have any room for right, yeah, yeah, That's the whole sure. point of it. It literally is for people who like buying things for fashion. You know, it's fashion. That's all it is. And I don't. I've never. I've never conformed to that. I mean, look at me. I'm you know, <laughs> I'm a dedicated follower over here. But it doesn't. It's not. Not for me. Not for me. And there's there's actually a bit of an interesting. I don't. Know, you probably don't find it interesting. But the uh, since the sort of these um, eye watches are coming in. Uh, universities have actually, because obviously you can cheat in tests quite easily, so they've decided to ban all watches, like because they can't, <laughs> apparently can't make the different the difference between an eye watch that's like massive bulky thing and a standard like quartz watch. Well, that's a shame because uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to bring in my granddad's wind up watch full of <laughs> cram- revision material scrawled into the back of it. Yeah. Shit! <laughs> Foiled! The thing is, they are getting popular again, though, aren't they, with the Pebble and a few other things. In fact, the um, the sports watches in general, you know, that connect your heartbeat or whatever, or yeah, your yeah. pulse into into the internet and tell you exactly how you should live your life, they're becoming... <laughs> Describe that like an old man. <laughs> it connects Su- you Sudo just said, the internet. Su- Sudo just said, bid the dog is a Luddite. <laughs> yes! Yeah, I am, oh. I am, screw you. I'm not into it. I can't be asked. But you, you look around my room. I've got all of the technical stuff that I need to do what I do. All the different kind of things that I do. I buy, you know, expensive technical stuff. But I don't buy stuff because it's cool. 
you know, I've got a, a decent webcam. I've got nice sound setup. I've got an awesome PC. But it, I'm not buying it because I'm going. Look at all this stuff that I've got. Even though I've just kind of done that on <laughs> like, online. You know, and I'm sat here with a big mic. And well, you know, I, I, you know what I mean. I'm not doing it because it's it's cool. I'm doing it because it's better for my the jobs that I'm putting them through. You Whereas keep telling a, yourself that fucking watch <laughs> it's not the na- it's not 1970 come on 1970 alternate 1970s with some crazy internet i mean if it was like the, they have the um sort of the mini ipod was it the ipod the uh, nano no the small the shuffle um oh, it's right, sin- yeah. essentially it's just like a like 20 year old ipod pretty well yeah apparently. steve first steve edition actually- ipod Steve yeah. has one. It was it was the mm. nano, the square one, which was basically just they had like yes. four icons on it, and he had a he had a wrist strap for it. He yeah, still yeah. got it, and he loves that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, there you go. There's your watch. You know, yeah, it has a, I'm sure it has a clock on it. You know. It does. Yeah. What's a yeah, clock? By that, and you're done. It's, it's a it's a chronometer. It's a measurement of time, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> measurement of time. Is that the <laughs> yes? I, no, don't, I'm not. I'm not bought into this. Not bought into this at all. Sexually explicit dialogue removed from DMC remaster, Devil May Cry remaster. Now they're saying that they've done this. They've really, they've removed this dialogue, which, uh, to be fair, is pretty sexually explicit. It was something like, um, once you've done that, you can bend me over and do me or whatever, you know, in more explicit ways. So it was at the, in the opening sequence. I'm not a Devil May Cry fan, but personally, I'm not into my slashers. But I thought it was worth talking about. Can, um, can I read one of the lines out, please? Go on. Lilith, the world is at last your bitch, as am I. Nothing left but to grab it by the hair, bend it over and... <laughs> and then... Cut on, I'm obviously. hoping it continues, but if it just... And... Now, now what they're saying, suggestive. what they're saying yeah. is they have removed the line because of not budget cuts because they didn't like the line in the first place. They're not removed it because of any complaints or anything like that about it. They probably have had complaints about it, you know. Oh, but they, they removed it because it's it's the definitive edition. This is the D- Devil May Cry definitive remaster type thing. Now, uh, there's an argument for that. I I'm I can see that because I mean when I look back at certain things I've written in the past just off my own back, you know, blogs and things like that, I don't like a lot of the way that I phrase things. You know, I, I, I what do you think? I I don't know. I guess they're like treating like a director's cut where it's like whatever the game designers say goes, you know, perhaps. Um or I mean uh, another thing could be it's it's a very strong show of character and they may not want to sort of be that definitive with her character i said uh, i the, a lot of you know the, the 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 whole women in gaming thing is is a big big subject at the oh, moment sure, we, yeah. we did talk about it last week i think uh, or the week before um, we tend to avoid that kind of thing on this yeah. show because it's it is very controversial and we're not here to stir anything up we're here to just talk between mates but i i mean, i've got fairly strong opinions about it i believe that it's you know it's an important issue that does need to be dealt with but it's also again to me it's political correctness gone mad in some respects but you know the feminists or the the people who are, are pro uh, what's, the, what's the word for it? Let's, let's keep it feminists, whatever. They, they, it, they, they would just say that's that's an ignorant and sexist view, and that's the argument that keeps getting thrown back and forth. There's a lot of mm. there's a lot of back and forth with it. Um, yeah. I don't think this is much feminism. I just think that I, it annoys me that you know we, we we're talking about a game where you murder people with swords and guns, <laughs> presumably, and yeah. yet they can't have a suggestive piece of speech in it. Well, no, I, I, I don't. The, the argument is, is that they're, they're not removing it because of that. Mm. But I thought it was interesting to see what people's opinions of it is. You know, it's yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. If you, uh, Josie, if you are interested in our in our discussion about sexism and women in games, and uh, well, in fact, we had Patrick on last week, and Patrick uh, Kowalik, uh, Imri, Imruniel, Imruniel. Uh, <laughs> He, he, me and him got into a fairly uh, heated debate about it. Um, so go and watch it on youtube.com uh, forward slash resonance arcade. And uh, I think it's last week's episode 20, episode 27, I think it was. Um, 
In Brunel. Yeah, there's a, there's a fair few repeated things in there, and I think we were basically arguing about the same point, but mm. we get there eventually, I think. We get there. Um, yes, so... Next, Uncharted 4. Who's who's put this in? This isn't something I've put uh, in. That was me. Go on, talk about uh, it then, Sam, since <laughs> I, I've led everything else. Well, I mean, it's... I don't know, it's... it's I'm, I'm not a big Uncharted 4 fan. It's just... It's almost... It's refreshing that they feel that they can delay it. Really. That's because it's, they're one of the most popular publishers well, on the planet, uh, de yeah. game developers on the planet at the moment. Mm. Well, I mean, it is... It is a flagship title for PlayStation 4, right? And they're delaying it from like prime time, like holiday season to somewhere next year. You know, it's, I, mm. I don't know. So, um, so, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a big Uncharted fan in general no. at all. In fact, I'm, I've, I've expressed my, my mm. opinions on Uncharted a number of times. I think it's an overhyped piece of bullshit. I have to. Be yeah, honest. I mean, I, but, I've never played it, but you know, it's. I mean, they say like in here. So like uh, it's like Naughty Dog wanted to sort of make it, you know, uh, make it the best they can, and like there, there must be a lot of pressure on them from um, like from the publisher to release it. Really. Well, that's the stock response though. But mm. uh, also, yeah, sure. bear in mind that Naughty Dog have also got a fair amount of. Um, Mm. I'd say gravitas with their publisher, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. I know it's still difficult. I'm not saying it's going to be easy for them uh, to, yeah. to push the publisher back, but they have su released successful games for a, a long time now. Um, they're, they're a popular publisher that people will buy their games. They'll already have pre-orders through the nose for this, I imagine. So the, uh, people are going to buy it. People aren't generally don't cancel pre-orders because a game gets delayed. So oh, I don't yeah. see, I don't really see the problem if it's going to improve no, no, no. the game or get it to a stable point. No, I mean it's, it's a good thing, really. Um, but I mean the same same happened with uh, Batman and Rocksteady; they, that got delayed, and it's better for it. You know? And GTA, to be honest. Well, let's see what that's like. It may it may yeah, still be yeah. full of bugs and still have problems with getting online when we actually do get it. But Lou mm. won't find out because he's not going to go online. <laughs> and. The game BAFTAs. What's yeah. this? Well, it's the. Um... <laughs> I know what it is. I'm just. Yeah. Uh, that's a bad way of asking. I think. But go on. <laughs> oh, it's. Uh, I mean, it's the BAFTAs for games. It's. Um, well, it's. <laughs> <I don't> know, <laughs> it's... <laughs> yeah, Chris. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the sort of BAFTA awards. Um, following on from uh, the uh, IGF awards, actually from GDC, um, in a way. Um, it's sort of award season for for video games. There's they're basically the main two really. Like a mm. lot of there's not a lot of um, sort of official award ceremonies. It's pretty much just IGF and BAFTAs. Um, and they usually like uh, uh, there's a live stream I've put in the thing. Um, Is it going on they, right now? No, no. It it'll start tomorrow, and it's actually it's being held at uh, Rest, um, sort of okay. in. EGX Res sort of in the evening, um, but uh, yeah, they usually have like lots of, sort of really sort of comedians or something host it, and they have like I know some very very good games usually show up. Is there. this is there um is there some kind of speculation as to which games might be in the running for this? Is there a list? Of, um, there's a lot of different categories though, with sure these kind of things. Yeah, I'm not sure if they've released the nominations yet. Yeah. They okay. have, they have. Uh, it's similar to the oh, Oscars, you know. They have, they okay, have like yeah, best yeah. composer. They have best, you know, that kind of thing. Best indie composer, best, uh, best indie game, best title, yeah. best... best developer's dog. Yes, that, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and it is, I think, it is publicly voted. The Baftas, isn't it? It's not a, it's not a panel yes. like the Oscars. You, you basically, um, like, I mean, comparing to the IGF, you to get your game in the IGF, you have to pay. I think it's ninety quid. Oh, ninety dollars, and then you get put it in there, and they have like um, a sort of panel of like a load of games journalists. That they send all these games to, and then they vote, and it it goes to a judges eventually. But then BAFTAs, you just put it on their on their website. They have a form that you fill in. You can just put your game in, um, and then they have like uh, I presume. Um, I know for the film BAFTAs, they have like they have members, and they they have certain members that are specialists in film and they send like screeners and stuff 
Um, so I presume they do that with games as well. Yeah, I imagine. I think you yeah. have to have a playable game before you can, uh, yeah. or a released game at least. Anyway, um, mm. I, I know a few people who've been BAFTA nominated, a new people, you know, game devs who've been who've yeah. won BAFTAs. You know, um, uh, I I, there's, there's a fair few out there. Uh, the, the, what was the guy who's developing the Sweeney at the moment? Uh, um, Dan that. Done that, yeah. yeah. Mm. Forgotten his second name, but yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's he's BAFTA. I think he's a mm. winner, BAFTA winner. Yeah, for private, it's a Channel Four educational game. But... All right, mm. that's cool. Mm. I, I don't again. I don't really follow award ceremonies and that. I'm, yeah, no, you know, it, I, I, know, I, just, I find it interesting. So, so to those who don't know, the IGF is the International Games Festival. Uh, is that right? Sorry. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. It's, I, um, I may be wrong here. It, it's held at. Um, it's basically held inside of GDC, and, and GDC sort of, is the Game Developers Conference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's sort of like it's the most respected award ceremony within the industry. And it's sort of I know there's there's been a lot of sort of big winners from it. Like Spelunky last year was like pretty much won everything, um, and this year I think uh, certainly. Uh, 80 Days, which is a mobile game that I've played quite a bit. That's a very good game. That one excellence for narrative. Mm. Um, that's did the it, only one I've played. Did, didn't Mike Bithell win? Did he win? Uh, or did he was alone. I think it got honourable mention um, last year. Um, I, I don't know if he actually won. My, he, uh... he, did, he did win... Uh, <laughs> it's actually quite funny. The game didn't win... He, he was nominated for BAFTA. He didn't win anything. But... Um, I think the uh, what's the name? Uh, the lead actor, the narrator, uh, Danny Wallace. Yeah, he won a BAFTA for best um, best narration in a game, and the guy who did the music uh, won best music in the game. So the game has two BAFTAs, but Mike Bithell doesn't have any. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I, uh, I um, mm. the composer on my game, uh, he I think he was BAFTA nominated. I oh, think, wow. and I'm not sure which one for. <laughs> No, for gunpoint. Um, um, yeah, Gun. it's, no, you're right. Gun. It was gunpoint, and he might even have won oh. actually. Um, yeah, Ryan Ike. Uh, he's mm. uh, he, he he did the gunpoint. Oh, he did some of the gunpoint soundtrack. Um, mm. So it was it was very nice when he sent me an email and asked if he could uh, compose on my game. I was quite chuffed with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. should uh, be. Yeah, yeah. So um, in terms of news, that is it. We have we have covered everything that we have picked up on. Um, it's been a, to me. It's been a fairly slow week in terms of of yeah. you know we've we actually had quite a lot of news to talk about. But I've I've been very very busy with Unity Five stuff on a night and on a day. My day job has just I went absolutely crazy at the moment. So I apologise for not being as on form as a, we we maybe normally would be. Um, so lastly, we'll just talk about the releases that I that I've had my eye on at least. Yeah, I've got, I've got I've actually opened up the Hotline Miami too. I didn't realise it came out yesterday. I knew it was yeah. imminent, but um, I've already seen that that's getting really good reviews. Um, yeah, it looks awesome. Cynical Brit this... Gaming has uh, done a great review on it, and I just think I, I really want that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I'm going to get that. I love the first one. I have to be yeah, honest yeah. with you. I, 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 again, ultra violence. It probably should be banned in every country, but <laughs> and it is banned in a number of countries. Uh, mm. One thing I did, I did find quite cool, uh, we may have talked about it on the show before, but the I think Hotline Miami 2 has been banned in Australia. Yeah, but the surprise me. The, 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 the Denaton, the developer, I can't remember his name, the, the guy who did it, <clears throat> he responded to a fan comment saying, how can I get hold of this game if it's banned in America? And he said, pirate it, torrent it. You have to. Thumbs up to the guy. Yeah. Screw the corporation, screw the big man, just get on with it. <clears throat> um, That's a ballsy answer. <laughs> yeah, I like that. And and I don't think there's any he's got in trouble for it. It's his game at the end of the day. Fair enough, he might be going through a publisher, but the publisher, if he's an indie and he's staying an indie, then surely the publishers he's going through uh, will be one of the indie publishers if he's doing that, unless he's doing Devolver, it himself. Devolver, he's, he's publishing through Devolver. So they're, yeah. they're an indie publisher, so that means that they will usually let him retain all rights and intellectual property and all of the other stuff to his game. They won't take; they'll just take a commission of some sort, which is the best, you know, the best way to go for indies. Um, oh, yeah. So there are there are a number of them. There are a number of publishers that will do that, and. Uh, I've, I said I've approached a few myself. Uh, we're, we're well well off that, but it's it's nice talking to people who respect that part of 
you know that part of the work that de- indie developers are putting all of their time and effort into it therefore they should retain some control or most of the control uh, Evolve came out yesterday <coughs> which Lou was uh, all all raging about and then one week suddenly went off I, I didn't go off it I just like I started to hear loads of stuff and you yeah. know it feels like it feels like you know when Watch Dogs came out finally and it was like mm-hmm. everyone was a bit yeah. eh. or Titanfall everyone was like woo Titanfall and then like after a week it was like eh, Titanfall it kind of feels like that it's like it's been there's been so much marketing effort that it's put me off it like they've had it's like walking through a city and someone comes out of the front door of a restaurant and goes come and eat in here it's great <laughs> and you know that's going to be shit or you're yeah. walking around in a, compa- you in, in a department store and, you, and, and a salesperson comes up to you and goes would you like any help this is this is 10% off today and it does this this I don't want to know I'm going to yeah. make my own informed decision a Leave great me alone. game should sell itself yes and yeah. I know that I, I do work in marketing I know it works and that marketing should be in a, a level where it's slightly more subconscious but, marketing should not but exist the, the the last few the last year or two some of the marketing pushes for some of these games have really put me off them and that's one of the ones that has it seems to be a case of let's put lots and lots of money behind this game because it's not a very good game and it's uh, Watch Dogs was the first no, big one to do not, that it's me. not always that it's that they've already invested a lot of money in it regardless of if it's a ga- good game or not that's what it is I mean Watch Dogs a lot of money went into that and it, you know the mechanics weren't great it looked okay it wasn't brilliant don't get me wrong but it looked okay but when they actually released it it became another gta clone that was not done as well as gta you know that was that's what it was and it just flopped Mm. it was a commercial success i believe they sold a lot of copies Mm. i didn't buy it it's not free i I still haven't played it at all no i won't i I probably won't bother i know i'm not gonna either but uh i mean gta like they had very little marketing especially sort of first off like i i've seen like bus ads with it since but i initially they barely had sort of you know, minimal marketing and it still managed to make like a billion in I think, three days yeah there's, yeah, there's some Everyone was going to buy that game. That game's one mm, of the ones oh, that sells itself. I mean, true, yeah, yeah. There was something that um, I read today, I think, an article on Twitter that says that, that I think it was something like 80 or 90% of game sales come from word of mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think it always will. I don't think it'll ever get to a point where you have to sell, well, unless it becomes super saturated, which it's mm. getting there, isn't it? So maybe that's why the triple A's are starting to push it because they're maybe feeling encroached upon by indie potentially I was just going to say that it just seemed interesting with the rise of indie that you suddenly get these massive marketing pushes where there's a well there is a bigger budget going to the marketing than there is in the game mm-hmm. yeah that, I have yeah, no doubt that the evolved sure. marketing budget was way more than the budget for the game development way more I, I don't know I don't really get in, I don't really understand all of that part of it and I don't really want to want to understand it either uh, Battlefield Hardline has got a release date. I'm not sure if this had one last time we talked about it, but that is now coming out on the 20th of March. Probably not going to bother with it myself. I've heard bad things about the beta uh, from a few f- people who tend to like those kind of games, you know. And yeah. plus, I think I've had enough of Battlefield in general. Battlefield 3 was good. 4 had lots four, of negative four. criticism. Mm. Um, Hardline, mm. yeah, it's got a bit of a different kind of twist to it cops and robbers type thing isn't it i think yeah kind of heists that kind of thing again probably not gonna bother um the escapists is an indie game that came out on the 13th of february i've heard very 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 good things about that i still haven't played but i missed it entirely and i just wanted to give it an honorable mention <laughs> yeah. um, so that's how that's kind of a 2d prison escape sim uh i remember i remember when this was announced a few years ago or or at least a year ago and it sounded like something i'd really want to like follow but i didn't get the chance to follow it i just i must have forgot you know as simple as that and it looks like it's cool and i've heard a few good things about it as well so i think i will get that at some point gta 5 pc 14th of april hopefully hopefully Uh, but we will get heists with it hopefully as well um where uh, and hopefully the issues that you know that that have been going on on console may be sorted by then but will it will it have another problem when it goes live every single rockstar game i remember when uh, red dead redemption uh, online went live that had loads of problems i remember when gta 3 
online or whatever it was called. I can't, can't remember. But that, that went live and that had loads of problems, you know. Mm. It's just Rockstar just need to get more servers or something. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. It's just terrible at it, aren't they? Yeah. <clears throat> and there is a game here called Pillars of Eternity. Yes. I didn't yes. put in there. Um, no, that that was me again. Um, there, as I've mentioned it at the start of the show. That's uh, it's coming out on the I think it's twenty sixth. Twenty sixth of March. Uh, yeah, yeah, twenty sixth of March. That's why I've been sort of play. That's why I've been playing the Baldur's Gate series to build up for it. It's basically oh, yes, a sequel to that made by Obsidian, who made uh, Fallout New Vegas and the South Park Stick of Truth game. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it was kickstarted uh, a while back, and it includes a documentary sort of making of, um, which is very interesting. Um, it includes like um, sort of details, the like real troubles that Obsidian were in before the Kickstarter and stuff. But it's yeah, it's basically just a fully updated modern Baldur's Gate essentially. So it may be good for you, Lou, to sort of get into it, mm. get into that genre maybe. Mm. Yeah, I'm just looking at it. It does look quite nice. It looks very old school. Yes, yeah. I think it's it might be in the same engine, or like it's it's definitely updated. But I need more time to play games. I really do. I've got so many, and there are so many that are coming out, and I just keep missing them and putting them on. It's getting to a point now where I'm I'm starting to regret the fact that I'm not playing games, you know, because there's so many that are coming. Hand of Fate mm. came out, which was a, a card yes, game that I yeah. quite fancied having a play of, and you know seeing how it worked that i still 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 see people playing it so it must be okay it can't be terrible um i know i've got a sort of disposition to that because i was last year i was working on a card based roguelike um which is essentially what that is and right that shut down the development of that game so yeah yeah, well, I, that's what happened. Well, not happened, but that's my exact feeling when, uh, even though it's, I'm nowhere near the, the fidelity of Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs had a similar kind of pitch to my game, uh, True, but yeah. my game's a bit more elaborate than, than Watch Dogs is, I think. Oh, not in graphical fidelity, but in uh, mechanics, at least. In the fact that it's not a QTE to hack. Oh, God, I wish QTEs would stop being the, the norm as well these days. They're driving up the wall. Anyway. Yeah, just bad design. Right, so unless you guys have anything else to talk about, we shall close the show. Um, I don't think I th so. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a it's been a pretty, pretty uh... solid one. No, nah, <laughs> it's not it been, been our best show. No, nah. not not been our best show only because not many not many people have played many games this week. I usually have at least a few to talk about and. But yeah, that hasn't that hasn't happened unfortunately. Um, so yes, uh, I shall let Sam. Pimp himself again if he wants to. Give you as any URLs or social media um, links well, that you, you have. Mythworld.com, that's my website. I haven't updated in a while, but it's got my Twitter and uh, back sort of portfolio on there. Um, and sort of an old blog. Uh, but mainly it's mainly it's really my Twitter. It's at Mythalaw. Um I sort of I rarely tweet, but what I do, like, I'm some sort of game dev. Um, I, I don't really have much time nowadays because of the uni. <laughs> Mm. Uh, really, um, all in the same uh, boat. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, yeah, but yeah. So I've been, I don't know, I tweet when when I make a game, I tweet about it. So, yeah, so you, you you tend to do smaller games and kind of get them out quicker than someone I, like me, for example. <laughs> it takes years I over it. Tend to have like a project, like a big project, going along, and then I'll break from it to do game jams, essentially. Um, but yeah, it hasn't come to anything yet. So have you got anything coming up? Any any releases that you've you've recently finished up, or are you going to finish up soon? Um, well, I'd say I'm working on this um, roguelike game, which I'm going to build into my next big project, and hopefully get it uh, around. There's the um, there's the left field collection in EGX, where essentially if you you send your indie game in, and if it's interesting enough, they will put it in. EGX and you don't have to sort of pay quite as much. All right. So I, I might sort of send it into that. Cool. Uh, see yeah, if we get sh shameless self promotion is the way to go, regardless <laughs> of regardless of who you are or what you do. Indeed. Okay, so um, thank you very much for everybody who's watched uh, today. Yeah. It's been a fairly active chat. And yeah. cool. uh, if you are interested in anything we do, or have you you've watched this show for more than ten minutes and and you're interested, please subscribe. 
Uh, we now have a new website, www.resonancearcade.com, which Lou quite nicely put together last weekend. So that's got all of our social media links and everything else in it. But we are also on twitter.com forward slash uh, Facebook, no, forward slash Resonance Arcade, facebook.com forward slash Resonance Arcade, youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade, and Google Plus, but I'm not going to give you that one. And thank you very much <laughs> for watching, everybody. We shall see you next week. See you later. <laughs>